We're very grateful that we live in an age where technology allows us to gather from wherever our lives take us, both virtually and in person, and that will be the format that we will be using today. We have several guests joining us on screen this, this afternoon, and then several more guests here in the room. Uh, from a housekeeping perspective, in the event of an emergency, I just want to remind everyone to use the exit that you entered through today would be the most direct route. So I'd like to begin by introducing Minister Rickford. Minister Rickford asked that I let you know that due to a very severe th snowstorm, if you can believe it, uh, in Kenora, he was not able to join us in pers person today and he very much regrets that he can't be here, but we're very happy to have him join us virtually. Uh, Minister Rickford currently serves as the Minister of Energy Northern Development and Mines, as well as the Minister of Indigenous Affairs here in Ontario. Before coming to Queen's Park, he represented the people of Kenora, Rainy River, and Ottawa as the Member of Parliament. During his seven-year federal term, he was appointed to Cabinet, where he served as Minister for the Federal Economic Development Initiative for Northern Ontario, Minister of Natural Resources, and Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Aboriginal Affairs. Among other positions and committee relationships, Minister Rickford belonged to the Aboriginal Affairs and Northern Development Committee and the Special Committee on Violence Against Indigenous Women. At both the federal and provincial levels, Minister Rickford has served the people of Ontario and Canada by building relationships with Indigenous communities and leaders, listening and giving voice to their concerns. Greg and his wife Janet and their two young daughters live in Kowatin, Ontario. He has lived and worked in many capacities in Northern Ontario throughout his professional career. He has owned his own business and holds degrees in common and civil law from McGill University and an MBA from the University of Laval. Today, Minister Rickford is keen on delivering the commitment of making more affordable, and businesses more prosperous through the ministries he oversees. I invite you now to the screen on my right. Uh, welcome, Minister Rickford. Well, thank you for that introduction. Um, I, I appreciate the opportunity to be here this morning. We were uh, uh, closed at all access points out here in Northwestern Ontario over the past 48 hours, which included uh, the Trans-Canada from the Manitoba border uh, to Shebequa, just outside of Thunder Bay, just uh, west of Thunder Bay, and uh, uh, all highway access points to the south. So literally uh, entrapped would probably be a better way to uh, to characterize what we've, uh, the, how the 50 centimeters of snow has, has hit us. But it's that time of year, and as Northerners, we... Uh, we come to expect these kinds of things. So I join you virtually today, and I'm really excited about this. First and foremost, I want to uh, uh, congratulate Algoma Steele and, and Ross Romano, who uh, has shown tremendous leadership, not just as a visible, highly visible caucus and, and cabinet minister, but somebody who remains committed to uh, a thriving um, Sault Ste. Marie and in particular, the major industries that have over uh, a, a long period of time uh, been core uh, industries uh, in, in that beautiful community. And in fact, I've been in and out of Sault Ste. Marie quite a bit over the past number of months and look forward to returning there uh, in, uh, in January for uh, some other business. So it brings us here uh, today um, very exciting announcement for Algoma Steel and the Sault Ste. Marie community. Um, Algoma Steel's decision to invest in the electric arc uh, furnaces uh, is a game changer for Sault Ste. Marie community. Uh, it creates good paying jobs and, and, and continues to boost the local uh, economy and, and today's announcement will take that much further. Um, we stand behind these companies uh, that create these kinds of opportunities uh, to enhance the economic prosperity of Sault Ste. Marie and the surrounding area. I go back to 2019 
uh, when our government extended a $60 million uh, loan arrangement to Algoma to help fund the modernization of its facility uh, while fighting unfair steel tariffs uh, south of the border. Uh, today, one of the ways we're supporting Algoma's um, electric arc furnace project is by locking down a consistent flow of clean electricity. This particular project is important because it, it secures a stable supply of steel that's critical to our government's Build Ontario plan. It's very much about, as my friend and colleague uh, Vic will allude to, um, our, our Made in Ontario mantra. And um, uh, we've seen unprecedented growth in, in, in mining throughout our government's mandate because we got out of the way and let the private sector do what they do best and build new mines. Uh, most recently, we just added the Mangino and Greenstone mines to a long list of mines being built or thriving across the north. Uh, and then through our fall economic statement, we introduced amendments to the Far North Act that will unlock new economic development opportunities for the Far, for the far North. Uh, we're also making progress on the Ring of Fire, uh, more than any other government has done in, in a couple of decades. We're actively supporting First Nations-led community infrastructure projects, building a network, plans for building a network of roads that unlock better access to health, social services, broadband, and clean electricity options for Indigenous communities in the far north. We recently approved the terms of references for two environmental assessments for community roads in the far north. So whether it's reducing red tape, creating our province first ever, ever critical mineral strategy, or by maintaining and expanding our province's transportation infrastructure, we're laying the foundation for a stronger Northern economy that benefits uh, indigenous communities and municipalities uh, and companies like Algoma across the North. But, but none of these exciting opportunities, uh, new opportunities to grow our economy can, out, can happen without the availability of quality building materials in a very competitive market. And so it's critical for Ontario to leverage our status as a North American manufacturer, manufacturing industry leader and encourage large scale steel sector investments like Algoma uh, Steel. Uh, colleagues, it's with this excitement and exciting announcement today that it's clear our plan for building Ontario is working and we're just getting started. There are a number of activities that today's announcement triggers that I'm looking forward uh, to announcing and being part of over the next uh, number of months. Um, but the real news uh, on this uh, uh, should come from my uh, dear friend and, and northern colleague, uh, Minister uh, Fideli, the Minister of Economic Development, Job Creation and Trade. So I'll, I'll, I'll pass the virtual microphone over to you, Vic, and, and thanks all for uh, having me uh, included in this exciting opportunity today. Brenda, would you like me to proceed? Yes, by all means, Minister, please. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And thank you uh, very much to Minister Rickford. Uh, and it is great to join everybody, albeit virtually today, to recognize the tremendous investment Algoma Steel is making in Sault Ste. Marie. I too want to acknowledge the uh, great work that uh, Minister uh, Ross Romano has done uh, in Sault Ste. Marie, uh, when we sit around the cabinet tables, I like to say he has very sharp elbows and makes sure that uh, we are all fully aware of what's happening uh, in Sault Ste. Marie. So uh, we know that uh, uh, Ontario is home to the best steel workers in the world. And we know that steel workers at Algoma Steel Plant in Sault Ste. Marie are essential to Ontario's automotive, construction, energy, defense, and many other manufacturing related industries. And it's important to acknowledge that our government has always stood up for Ontario's steel industry and its workers. And that's why we continue to work with industry partners like Algoma to position Ontario for long-term competitiveness and environmental sustainability 
but it really continues to strengthen Ontario's regional economy. We understand the valuable contribution that Algoma steel workers make to our province's economy, the, our northern economy, and that investing in workers pays off. And as Minister Rickford mentioned, that's why in 2019, we invested $60 million in Algoma steel in order to protect the good jobs there, workers, their families, and the community of Sault Ste. Marie really rely on. We want to see Algoma remain an environmentally responsible, commercially viable, and economically stable source of jobs, growth, and economic uh, opportunity for the future. So, uh, as Minister Rickford mentioned last week, we released the 2021 Ontario Economic Outlook and the Fiscal Review. It's called Build Ontario, and that plan lays out how our government, together with industry, will build the foundation for Ontario's economic recovery and prosperity by supporting our steelmakers and workers while continuing to protect our progress against the COVID-19 pandemic. So we have been working and we are creating right now the conditions for Ontario steel industry to thrive and to grow. You know, since we took office, we've listened to the sector, we've worked hard to develop this competitive environment that's necessary to facilitate the kind of investments you're gonna hear about. And that's why through lowering taxes, reducing electricity, cutting red tape, um, we've reduced the cost of doing business in Ontario by $7 billion every year now. Every year, it will be $7 billion less expensive for the, our businesses to do, to run here in the province of Ontario. So we're gonna keep um, working to ensure that Ontario is open for business and to encourage and attract investments like these uh, that you're going to hear about in a moment. Investments that will create good jobs and secure economic growth and prosperity for the community of Sault Ste. Marie and quite frankly, beyond. So thank you, um, uh, Minister Rickford. I'm going to leave it to our other colleague, Minister Smith, to uh, bring the good news today. So back over to you, Brenda. Thank you so very much, Minister Fideli, Minister Rickford, for your remarks. Very exciting developments here. And, and now I have the pleasure uh, to introduce Minister Todd Smith. Uh, for over 25 years, Todd Smith has been a trusted voice in the Quint region. He's a graduate of Loyalist College, and uh, he embarked on a 16-year career in radio broadcasting. I should have you up here doing these remarks. Uh, serving as the voice of the Belleville Bulls hockey and uh, rising to news director at uh, Quint Broadcasting. Uh, Todd was first elected in 2011 in the riding of Prince Edward Hastings. While in opposition, he served as the PC critic for several portfolios, including the Energy File. In 2019, he was elected in the new Bay of Quint riding as part of the Doug Ford government. Over the past three and a half years, he has served in a number of cabinet portfolios and now serves as Minister of Energy. We have a few more people joining us today. I welcome everyone to come in, please. Come for the exciting news. Thank you for joining us. Without further ado, I would call upon Minister Todd Smith. Thanks very much, uh, Brenda. It's great to be here in Sault Ste. Marie with my good friend and colleague and buddy, Ross Romano. And uh, as uh, my colleagues, um, one snowed in, one not, um, have mentioned, he is an outstanding voice uh, for the Sioux region at the legislature in caucus and uh, at the cabinet table as well. And it's a real pleasure uh, to join him. As Brenda alluded to, I was the voice of the Belleville Bulls for many years. I've made many trips into Sault Ste. Marie on the wrong side for probably most of the guys and gals that are here working today. You were cheering for the Greyhounds. Of course, I was calling the games uh, for the Belleville Bulls, but to use a hockey analogy, we've got a bit of a hat trick we're announcing here today. Creating and sustaining jobs, growing economic opportunities, and then being sound and solid environmental stewards as well. And uh, 
It gives me great pleasure uh, to be here at Algoma Steel as we celebrate this major, major investment in clean technology that's going to position Sault Ste. Marie as a world leader in green, low emission steel production. Our government has worked since day one, as uh, my colleagues mentioned, to build a climate where businesses can have confidence to make investment that support good paying jobs just like this announcement here today at Algoma. Key to creating this business environment is access to a clean and affordable electricity supply. As companies like Algoma Steel make the investments to reduce emissions, they can do so confident in the fact that they have access to one of the cleanest electricity systems in the world, with approximately 94% of generation coming from emissions-free sources. That means we're maximizing the emissions reduction impact of the transaction, uh, transition, I should say, to electric with uh, energy from a range of zero emission sources like nuclear and hydro, removing three million tons of emissions, roughly the equivalent to taking almost a million cars off the road in Toronto. And it was explained to me today that there are about a million cars on the road in Toronto. Ontario is already leading the country in decarbonization, and this investment will close 16% of the gap between our emissions today and our 2030 Paris targets. But that emissions reduction could not be realized if electricity is not affordable, and that's an issue families and businesses dealt with far too long under the previous government, where we saw 300,000 manufacturing jobs leaving Ontario. Time and time again, employers considering Ontario as a place to invest and create jobs and do business ended up going somewhere else due to the province's high commercial and industrial electricity prices. And as Brenda said, one of the previous portfolios I held was economic development, job creation and trade, where Minister Fideli is holding the fort now. And I can tell you that early in our mandate, we heard a lot about the high cost of electricity in Ontario and why it wasn't the best jurisdiction to invest in. And having served as the energy critic on this file before we came to government, I know I heard about this as a major barrier to investment daily. That's why our government acted immediately to reverse this trend and make energy prices more affordable for families and businesses looking to invest in Ontario and create jobs. And Minister Rickford, when he was Minister of Energy, did a great job at that. We canceled contracts for power we didn't need at the time, and that saved ratepayers $800 million. Starting on January 1st of this year, we implemented our comprehensive electric plan, which is reducing electricity costs for both industrial and commercial businesses by up to 17%. These and other actions are making our electricity rates more competitive than many other Canadian and North American jurisdictions, supporting significant investments that are going to secure jobs for decades to come. Our government is going to continue to support job creators in all industries across the North and across the province with access to affordable and reliable clean energy. It's a pleasure to be here today and it's a great pleasure to see this investment as Algoma moves toward the electric arc furnace and they've made that uh, announcement um, and, and we're here to support them every step of the way at the Ministry of Energy and with the Government of Ontario and the colleagues that are uh, joining us virtually from other uh, places in Ontario. It's now my pleasure to uh, introduce the local MPP, Ross Romano, and uh, I had the opportunity a number of years ago to be here during Ross's by-election. The weather is much nicer today, Ross, than it was in those days. I recall the snowbanks were pretty high and uh, we were wearing toques at the time, but it's a lovely day in Sault Ste. Marie today. I know Minister Rickford is probably a bit jealous given the fact that he's uh, probably gone out to shovel 50 centimeters of snow in Kenora. Uh, but, but Ross, as mentioned uh, several times, has been a tremendous advocate for the Sioux at Queen's Park, and it's my pleasure to welcome my good friend Ross Romano to the microphone. I'd like to start by saying ani, bojo, hello everyone. Minoshinakwe, good morning. Pleasure to be here with you all today again. 
Uh, important to also recognize uh, that we are in the lands of the Anishinaabe people, Robinson here on uh, territory, the lands of the uh, Ojibwe, Garden River, Batchewana First Nations, all of our Métis people as well as uh, urban indigenous uh, people. And it's just important to recognize that um, we weren't here first, and it's a privilege to be able to, uh, to be on these lands. I've actually written a speech. Those who know me locally know that this is not my common, common thing to do. But I will say to my good friend, Minister Rickford and Minister Fideli, who are back at home right now or at Queen's Park, you'll prefer that I wrote it out and I will read it because it'll be a lot briefer than my usual comments would be. Just play with this a bit here too. I hope that works. Is that okay? Everybody can hear me just fine? I haven't messed up everything. In 1973, my father immigrated from Italy to Sault Ste. Marie. He started working at Algoma Steel in 1978. There he joined my uncle Alfredo, my zio Alfredo, my uncle Giuseppe, my zio Beppe, and my grandfather Frank, my nonno. Algoma Steel employed nearly 12,000 people at that time. It was the largest employer in Northern Ontario. If you lived in or around Sault Ste. Marie at that time, you either worked at Algoma Steel, you were related to somebody who worked at Algoma Steel, at a minimum, you knew someone who worked at Algoma Steel. And back then, things were very good for Algoma Steel, and they were very good for Sault Ste. Marie too. Because like in so many other Northern Ontario communities, the health of your largest employer is directly related to the health of your economy and a healthy economy leads to a healthy community. And the Northern Ontario economy was booming, whether it be any form of natural resource development, mining, forestry, steel production. But things changed. By the time I started my first year of high school in 1993, Algoma Steel was going through its first bankruptcy restructuring proceedings. That would be the first of three such proceedings in as many decades. Things in Sault Ste. Marie and across all of Northern Ontario had taken a serious decline. I was 12 years old at that time, and I can remember sitting at my din dining room table with my nonno and my Zalfredo, and my zio Beppe and my dad. And I remember the conversations we were having about Algoma Steel at that time were not great conversations. Times were tough for so many families. I remember over the next many years, as I would chat with all of the students throughout my high school for so many years thereafter, those kids were having the same tough conversations at their dining room tables too. Over the next three decades, we in Sault Ste. Marie and across all of Northern Ontario saw a tremendous out-migration of our youth. Kids didn't think that there were opportunities left for them in the North. They started to leave. While our young people still felt great pride in their communities, they also felt great despair. And as the health of our local economies in Northern Ontario deteriorated, so too did the health of our communities, the effects of which are in some ways at their worst today. In 1993, I felt something profound within me. I felt like one day I would find a way to be a part of a solution for my own community of Sault Ste. Marie and for all of Northern Ontario. By 2018, Algoma, then SR Steel Algoma, was three years into its third bankruptcy protection proceeding. I realized around that time that those proceedings were happening, that this was my opportunity to be a part of a solution that my 12-year-old self had been thinking about 25 years before. Because by that point, I had three little boys of my own, and I did not want them to grow up with the same kind of despair that so many of us lived with decades earlier. I wanted to show our youth that they didn't have to leave their homes and their families. I wanted young people across all of Northern Ontario to know that their home communities were in fact places that they could work in, live in, 
and raise their families in. After I was elected to be a part of this government on June 7th of 2018, I started a youth committee. We had a mantra, words that we try, cheered multiple times every week, home to stay. There was and remains good reason to say those words. Very good reason, in fact, because within the first year of being elected, our government was able to help our community overcome a tremendous hurdle, one that I'm very proud of. That was when Premier Ford was right here at Algoma Steel announcing that we had protected the pensions of nearly 9,000 retired steel workers. Shortly thereafter, along with Minister Rickford, we announced that in, co uh, in collaboration with the federal government, we were financing $150 million towards capital expenditures here at Algoma Steel. Those announcements, along with so many others, both large and small, many of which are still yet to come, were the building blocks that led to this investment that is being discussed here today. A $700 million investment at Algoma Steel. Announcements of training programs like micro-credentials and a school of engineering are all critically important pieces that have contributed to the ability for Algoma to modernize and to increase its production and manufacturing here at home in Sault Ste. Marie and throughout all of Northern Ontario. This demonstrates that Algoma Steel, which has been our largest employer for several generations and has supported thousands of workers and their families throughout this time, will continue to be here for several generations more. This demonstrates that Algoma is healthy again. This demonstrates that our economy can become healthy again. And as our economy in Sault Ste. Marie and throughout all of Northern Ontario becomes healthy again, so too can our communities have a chance at becoming healthy again. I had the privilege, and I now have the privilege, of introducing you to the uh, CEO here at Algoma Steel, Mike McQuaid. As I uh, do so, I want to mention, it was important for me to recognize my family members who worked here, like so many of us who have family members who have been here. And I was at the season opener of the Greyhounds earlier this year, and a, a gentleman by the name of Mark Harrison works here at TransWest was chatting with me in the crowd. And he said, you know, you've got to make a, a trip out here at some point in time. And I thought, you know, I absolutely do. So I called Mike and I said, Mike, can we potentially organize an opportunity for me to go to Trans West? Because my dad worked there, my uncles worked there. And we went for a tour. And uh, it was a great experience. And we had some great conversations with Mike uh, about what we're talking about here today, about this investment and what it means for our community and what it means for the future of our workers here in Sault Ste. Marie and for the next generation of steel workers that will come through this place. So without further ado, I want to introduce you now uh, and hand the floor over finally to uh, CEO of Algoma Steel, Algoma, sorry, Mike McQuaid, who's uh, on the screen here. Thank you. Thank you so much. On behalf of Algoma Steel, I would like to thank Ministers Rickford, Smith and Fidelli and of course, our good friend, Minister Romano, for joining us today. We're pleased to welcome you to Algoma for this exciting announcement, yet another momentous milestone in our transformation journey. Algoma's transition to electric arc steelmaking will be a transformational $700 million project. As transformational as our investment in direct strip production complex was some 25 years ago. The switch to a proven low carbon manufacturing process will shrink Algoma's environmental footprint significantly, reduce greenhouse gases <clears throat> emissions by some 70%. And when paired with Ontario's clean power supply, position Algoma among the leading producers of green steel in North America. This could not have been achieved without the support of the government of Ontario. Over the past year and a half, we have been engaging with the province on various components of work associated with the EAF transformation. They saw, as we did, the opportunities that could be unlocked by modernizing steelmaking in Sault Ste. Marie. 
The <clears throat> decision to invest in electric arc steel making means we will be able to sustain advanced manufacturing in our community, offering a bright future with high quality jobs for generations to come. We're already partnering with regional academia to create a system of multi-generational support to provide new skills training to Algoma current employees and to build career pathways for regional youth in the subjects of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, as well as the valuable trades. We will be building significant infrastructure to achieve this transformation and will continue to work with the province to bring these assets to fruition. And our efforts will make a better environment for everyone, reducing CO2 emissions by 3 million tons, the equivalent of taking a million cars off the road. This is a massive win. It's a win for Algoma Steel, for our employees, for our community, for Ontario and for Canada. Future generations will look back on this transformation as a pivotal moment. And we again thank the province of Ontario and the Ford government for the role in helping to make this happen. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mike. Ross, Todd, thank you very much for your remarks. And to all of you for joining us today, our government partners, members of the community, and, and most importantly, perhaps the members of uh, the Algoma team, my fellow colleagues that were able to join us today and that really are part of making this all happen and they'll execute on this transformation. So thank you for joining us. Um, that concludes our formal remarks today and I'm going to open up the floor for questions from the media now. Are there any questions for any of the ministers or for our CEO, Mike McQuaid? You prefer to do one-on-one, -on -one? okay. Very good, well then that concludes our uh, festivities today. Thank you very much for coming and uh, take good care and travel safe. Thanks very much, bye for now. <laughs>